let's look at another example this one is more realistic and will help you get a clearer idea about calculating factor loads let's read out the question the various axial loads for a building column have been computed according to the applicable building code with the following results dead load is 200 kips load from roof 50 kips live load from floors is 250 kips compression wind 128 kips tensile wind 104 kips compression earthquake 60 kips and tensile earthquake which is 70 kips determine the critical design column load pu using the lrft load combinations so here we are given a bunch of axial loads and we need to compute the maximum factor load on a column look um, look at this representation we need to find the c which is the axial load on the column let's first list down the data we know from the problem so we have dead roof live load live load compression wind tensile wind compression earthquake and tensile earthquake here as you will notice i have taken compression loads as positive compression wind is positive and compression earthquake is positive and tensile loads are in negative why you ask because the uh, compression forces here which is c is acting downwards in the direction of gravity as the other loads so the axial load here will add to the existing gravity loads and thus it is positive tensile wind or tensile earthquake will cause a tensile effect which force that acts upwards which way which can cause uplift hence these forces are negative these are the load combinations which we'll be using in the lrfd load combinations first equation is pretty straightforward you have 1.4 d d is 200 kips so we get 280 kips notice how we have kips as a unit and not pound per foot because it is a column and column always takes uh, axial loads we use kips but beams they take linear load and thus we use pound per foot in the previous examples okay second equation we have 1.2 times dead 1.6 times live and 0.5 times environmental we have all the values we substitute them here and get 665 kips as our factor load for equation 2 equation 3 we have 1.2 times dead plus 1.6 times environmental Plus, here we have an option to use the greater of live load or 0.5 times wind. But here if you see, we have been given both the loads. We, we even have the live load of 250 kips and we have uh, wind load. We have compression wind of 128 and we have tensile wind of minus 104. So we need to see which one will give the maximum effect. So for that, I will first use the live load in this equation. And I have assumed that when this live load was, uh, when this live load is calculated in PSF form, it is less than 100. That is a pure assumption I've taken. That is the reason why I've taken a load factor of 0.5. Right, so this 0.5 times live load, I got this one. Now we need to use wind. So 1.2 times dead, 1.6 times environment, plus 0.5 times wind load. So wind load here, again, we have two different types of wind loads compression and tensile here i have used the compression wind load which is positive 128 and in the third equation I, I would use a tensile wind load which is negative 104 and i will calculate the factor loads for all the three different equations i hope this is clear similarly we can do it for equation 4 5 6 and 7 so in each one of them i have used um, compression and tension wind compression and tension earthquakes to get all the factor loading values next so after calculating all the factor loads you will notice that 665 kips is the maximum factor load on the column so that means that this column needs to be designed for a compression force of 665 kips i hope it is clear <laughs> 